Welcome back. We're still talking sickle cell disorder, something that is more common in this country than a lot, pe a lot of people know. And you can join the conversation with your questions and your comments. The number to call is 0808-054-2233. That's 0808-054-2233 for questions and comments. Sickle cell disease, remember, is very common in Nigeria. We carry about half of the global burden. Now, um, I want to ask, what are the different interventions for managing sickle cell disorder? Yeah, no, yes, um, in managing sickle cell anemia, there are conventional treatments, which includes, you want to remove all the triggers, you give prophylaxis, antibiotics, penicillin precisely. You are giving vaccination. The routine vaccination, routine some, vaccination. Yes, routine vaccination should be given. And some other vaccinations that are no that are not routine. Those are of, peculiar, yes, to, peculiar these to people. To the, uh, sickle cell since they are prone to you know infection. One of them is a uh, what's it called pneumococcus vaccine. Hemophilus vaccines and those are for the chest syndrome. Yes, exactly to guard them against pneumonia because oftentimes they come down with uh, pneumonia. Where does hydroxyurea come in? Yes, that's, that's, an, that's another treatment uh, strategy. Hydroxyurea is used to elicit the hemoglobin F in them, so that it, this can protect against frequent uh, crisis. Sorry, yes. this hemoglo hemoglobin F, that's the yes. fetal, fetal hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. blood, yeah. the fetal. one that protects them from when they were When they were inside their mother, okay. that is the hemoglobin that they use okay. to carry oxygen around their body. As they were given back to before the age of six, this hemoglobin F dropped suddenly to maybe near to, near to zero. But of course, the scientists, they have you know, designed a way, a quiz, they, since they know that hemoglobin F is protective, they design a way in which they can, you know, trigger the production of this uh, hemoglobin F. And one of the drugs they use is adosuria. Okay. We use that a lot, and as much as possible, when they are, you see that they're having crisis, you give it to them. And of course, it has proven that it reduces the number of crises they have. Another treatment strategy we do is blood transfusion. Blood transfusion is very key to the management. Whether you are giving it as a simple blood transfusion, whereby the patient has anemia, you just want to top his blood, or the patient has uh, some other complication, he, has, he, he doesn't have anemia, but he has some complication that you need to exchange the blood. Maybe he has too many cells. Yes, maybe like what we are called, to, talking about acute chest syndrome. syndrome. Okay. One of the treatments is to exchange the blood for hemoglobin A, A blood. Yeah. I just want to quickly ask you, you mentioned triggers. What are some of these triggers? Yes, dehydration is one of them. You, as much as possible, you take them away from cold. As much as possible, you don't, when they have um, infection, you treat them. In fact, as a matter of fact, you must educate the parents on how to know that their children have a, a fever. But of course, when they are going to high altitude, they want to travel to out of the country, they want to travel to Abuja. Of course, these are um, you know, some of the precipitants that can cause the crisis in them. Does that but, mean they shouldn't fly? No, no. they can fly, <laughs> but of course, we know we prepare for it. Yeah. Okay. You understand? Because the altitudes is another. When they go higher like that, they are, you know, oxygen tend to, the way it will release, the way the hemoglobin will release uh, oxygen to the tissue will reduce. Yes, because mm. of the altitude. Yes, the high altitude. I know the, the air is thinner up there. Mm. Yes. Okay. Because of um, that. You but of, course, of course, I want to add to it. Okay. Apart from that, another treatment we have is bone marrow or stem cell transplantation. That's where which I is the cure <laughs> we have now for sickle cell You anemia. called it a cure. Yes. Not a management. This is a cure. What does this involve? Well, it involves uh, removing. Of using a donor. Just a second, Doctor. Okay. There's a there's a call coming in. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Rashida. Oh, good afternoon. Yes. What's God your question? You. Thank you so much. I like that uh, a program you are discussing. 
Thank you so but much. Can the doctor or the other lady there tell us what to do to prevent our children? As for me, I've tried a lot. When a couple that before the love gets into deep, go and do your test so that you will know what genotype both of you are carrying. Because I do understand when the love click and you get wedded and you have a sickle cell, uh, a baby, the love will away. But you know, these are our children. For them to listen to us is very difficult. So I think if the doctor can please help us put it on the ear for these are our children, before their love gets to a certain stage, they should know their genotype. Thank I think you so much, that. Rashid. That, that, that was such a cogent that. point. I think you already have counseling for that. Yes. Uh, besides, you know, like I said, this is World Sickle Cell Day month, 19th um, June was World Sickle Cell Day, and part of the activities we had was going, going, doing outreach programs. We went to Ikorodu local government this time around, and we did a community outreach, and that meant um, testing people for their, their sickle cell status, what is their genotype. So, and then in addition to that, we focused a lot on, on young people because they're sensitive to know the genotype well before they get into relationships. Okay, I'm aware that mm -hmm. the sickle genotype is S. Yes. So if somebody is S and S from both parents, mm -hmm. the person that is when the has, person has the disorder. disorder. What kind of advice do you give somebody who is a carrier, but is not a full-blown, uh, um, how do I say? Do, we're ca a carrier, like I am a carrier. That's okay. like I have the gene, but I, I don't have the condition. Okay. I, I'm able to pass the gene to my offspring, to my children. Okay. And that being a carrier, like as a carrier, having a normal gene A, and, and the sickle gene S, when two carriers come together to have a child, it's like a lucky dip. Okay. It's a, it's, a, it's a question of chance. And this is one thing I would like also to pass across because some people think they've heard one in four. It's common to hear one yes. in four. Yes. But that one in four does not mean that if you have four children, one child will, will have sickle cell. And all four could. All four could. Then all four could escape exactly. as well. And I, do have, I have an experience with a family when I was in, in, in medical school. All seven children were normal. Oh, wow. She was And lucky. both parents were A, were a S and AS. Okay. And, and the converse is also possible, where both parents would be carriers and all children could be school have sickle cell. Okay. So it's a question of chance, and it's in every pregnancy. So it's like you present the, the, the pregnant mother in each pregnancy with a basket with them, tabs. But at the end of the day, she AS. has to choose. She for said, herself what she's going to do. So we don't, we don't ram it down anybody's throat. So the, the teaching is this. You, in genetic counseling, 